Can you make it go down again? And how did that happen? A rogue wave, let's call it. That's rogue. your story? It was rogue. Over there is another proper boat rampy thing. Over and there. then over there, around behind all that, is another boat rampy thing. Look at that. We've got a gearbox on the kitchen, on the galley floor. So, that's where she was. That's where she is. That's where she's going. What are you up to <laughs> now? This mate well, just said to me, can I borrow a hot glue gun? Have you got any of them? And um, he's going to make a mock-up. What are you going to make a mock-up of? Uh, I've always wanted to build a rooftop tent for the Land Cruiser. Start with a mock-up and get proof of concept going. So yeah, this was just a sort of proof of concept to get all the angles and and get a feel for it. So that's the first step. So I'm making a 10 to 1 scale mock-up. And what about living area? Uh, there'll be a bottom section and top section that come together. Um, and the in-between section will be canvas. I'm doing a blue Peter thing. Cut off just one side. And just one side, and you end up with it looking like that. And the finished one, a hey presto, is like this. There we are. Well, you you need double-sided sticky tape for glue, Peter. Yeah. Well, no, the modern one, the hot glue gun version. Yeah. A lot of you wouldn't know what blue Peter was. Uh, only the English would. I wonder if it still exists. I don't know. Blue Peter was a kid's show where they it sort of make things, craft stuff. And need, first thing you need is a new blade. The beautiful morning here on the farm. So tranquil. How's it going? Good. That's it, on the roof. And then we've got um, struts, gas struts. So once you release the clips, Release the hounds, release the clips. What will happen is. Oh, wow, look right. at that. So it's got hard ends, so you can actually lay up against the ends reader book. That's where you climb in, that's on the roof. So there's a ladder there um, that slides out, right, and down. The sides are canvas with opening windows. And when you're finished, it's on gas strut, so you just grab it and you pull it down. Well, it'll be... There it goes down like that. Okay. Love it. Can you make it go down again? So that's what we're looking at making. Yeah. Everything stays made up, and all you do is just close a lid. Right? It'll have sides on it, so it won't be wobbly. Um, close the lid and do the catches up, good to go. Dust proof, waterproof, vermin proof. Snake proof. Yeah, so that's what we're going to build for the top of the car. I love it. Tell me about the top. Uh, there'll be a solar panel on top, so that'll all keep our, um, our fridge and everything charged. So the difference between this one and the commercial ones is... Well, all the ones you buy that are commercial are soft all the way around. When you go to sit up in bed to read a book or something, it's all floppy. This one has a hard back and a hard front. So that's the difference with my design. Tell me about the size. And well, why. it's it's 1.8, which is six foot wide, so it's nearly king size width. And length is 2.5 meters, but we you won't use that all for bed. So that'll be just be normal size. So there'll be an area here as you come in um, to put shoes and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and what sort of ladder will you use? Uh, it'll be one of those telescopic ones. So that'll live in here, and as you open this unzip and you pull out the ladder. So you just buy the ladder? Yeah, they just 
you just get them from um, hardware shop. Okay. And you're mocking up the walls? Yeah, yeah, just putting in the canvas. So is, is the tent going to be blue? <laughs> no, it'll be, it'll be green or tan or something. It's very cute. Do you think it was a bit small though for us to fit in there? Yeah. Another joke? Check back later. Look at that. Yeah. You're gonna put the windows in there? Yeah. Do a half scale one next. <gasps> Out of timber. Really? Yep. I suppose, yeah. Or I might even do full scale. So they have to fold inwards when it folds down. There we go. What are you up to? I'm cutting the new registration letters for the new peanut. So this is what we could have done with when you were trying to make Hamilton Island. Would have been a lot easier. So that's the Queensland colour, being maroon. So regulations are 152 mil high. 150 mil high for a planing boat. Oh, okay. Non-planing 75. And personal watercraft is a hundred. You can go smart. Yeah, we need a new cutter needle for our machine because it skips every now and then. But anyway, good enough had the machine for years. Now she's going to get our new numbers. Yeah. Nice and bright and sparkly or shiny. I got the engine going yesterday. So she now works again, it was full of water. And why was it full of water? Oh, you know why, because I sank the boat. And how did that happen? A rogue wave, let's call it. That's rogue. your story? It was rogue. It's like, a, like when you're in Africa, you know when you're in Africa and the four wheel drive tips over because you've been upended by a rogue elephant. Well, I got upended by a rogue wave. It was big. That's where it's going. You happy with that? Yep, happy with that. I'm not a professional sticker putter on her. Not happy? No. Nah, crooked, is it? A little bit crooked. So everything's dried out now. Yeah. And um oh, good. Alright, let's try again. Mm-hmm. These bubbles come out as it warms up. You can use soapy water and do it that way, but they just come out with the sun. Job done. Just gonna do the other side now. Here we are, we're on the move. We've uh, managed to get off the mooring. The and... turtles. Oh. The turtle just popped up again, yeah. Sorry. And we're changing the moorings, we're going to go closer over there. So Evie's doing her job. Yeah, she's down there running us forward. So we thought we'd better move the boat while we've got her because pinna number three is a giant sea. That's, that one over there is called Double Cone Island. On the right of Double Cone is Hayman. Uh, our farm is on the other side of that hill over there. But you've got to go about 20 minutes to get around there. Yeah, you go round, 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 round and we're over there. But we picked a good day to move. Yeah, it's dead. Not too no much wind. Wind. I've got Wendy on standby duty to drop the pick in case things go wrong. Um, but we're pretty clear of other boats, so we're just going to sort of go straight in now, and then we're going to find the mooring, which is always a hard bit. If we can't find it, we just re-anchor. Yeah. It's a bit nerve-wracking. When you don't have a real engine and uh, you've just got a dinghy engine that could fail at any time, and she has in the past. 27 year old dinghy engine. Uh, so, fingers crossed, we get there without hitting anybody or anything. That's the plan. It's 
quite rolly today. You can see the swell, look at that. We've successfully made it onto the mooring. Magnus's heart rate is uh, dropping a little bit now. <laughs> it's just having to rely on it. A very unreliable two-stroke outboard to do all our manoeuvring is amongst all these rocks and boats and it's a little bit um, yeah, a bit tender on the old on the old part. So anyway, we're here, we're gonna shut down and have a cuppa. Yeah. That's all good English people do. If the proverbial hits the fan, you have a cup of tea. And we haven't had one yet, have we? We haven't had our morning so cup of tea. Yeah. Get here. Look how close we are to everything, see? Wow. <coughs> We've got penthouse uh, posse. Look at that. Right there's a boat rampy thing in there. Over there is another proper boat rampy thing. Over and there. then over there, around behind all that, is another boat rampy thing. So we're surrounded by boat rampy things. We're here for the whole... And we are here for the long haul. We yeah. have decided to book the ball. For a couple of months. So that we can get work done and not worry about northerlies coming in and the anchor dragging yeah. and all sorts of horrible things happening. Cup of so we've gone for the safe option. And with cyclone season coming, it's probably the most sensible. So what's coming out again? Well, it's going to be out for a while now. So we're safely on this new mooring. We're booked here for a few months. So D-Day. So, uh, going to be doing lots of boat jobs, I think. Gearbox out first. <sighs> then maybe engine out second. Who knows what's going to happen in the next three months. We won't be going anywhere. I know that much. But, um, it's time. Because after I start, after I do the first bolt now, we're not going, definitely not going anywhere. Because, well, I suppose you could, we could sail away and, yeah, who knows. Anyway, the first bolt is about to be undone. Can you pass me my headlamp, please? Must be serious. Hey, I'm going in. I've got my miner's light on. Get a bit of light in there. Mm. There she is. So, show me the bit you're taking out. The bit. The gearbox, where is yeah. it? Oh, I can't see it from here. Oh, there, that yeah, little thing. That grey and yellow thing, and yeah. brown and yellow thing. Can you shine your light on it? That's better. Oh, that grotty looking. That grotty looking thing. Is that going to get the yellow treatment? It's going to get that treatment. Okay. Oh, first one off. It was like just yesterday that I put this up on. Putting a new a new anti anti siphon in. New lots of things going in. New hoses everywhere. Some new stuff. I'm glad you took a photo of it. Because I know we have put it back together again. All these hose clamps getting replaced. They're all grungy and just about to snap. Look at that one, just about to go. It's a bit nasty. Oh yeah, these are all replaced. Now stop and start. Yeah, that will get replaced, I'm sure. Yes, yes, yes. New it's very creative. New wash cable. But you can't get in the Pacific easily. Easily, yeah. Oh, that's an American one. Half the hose clamps are American, half the rest of the world. So American ones are 6.5 mil, which is quarter inch, and the rest of the world is eight mil. the rest of the world. 
Well, there's only three imperial countries in the world. There's one tiny um, West African country. There's Burma. And there's the United States of America. The rest of the world is all metric. So you've got to have a toolbox for both systems though, which we do. Oh, that's the rest of the world. I mean, an American one. Oh, all, oh that's crazy. <laughs> really? Well, They're all just mixed up. No, no, I've been slowly replacing hose clamps as we go whenever I see one that's starting to fail with a rest of the world one. Um, but there's still a few original ones that haven't failed. Like this one's mint condition still. Look, it's really good quality 316 stainless. This hose clamp's gone, look. But I've replaced it here, and this one's just about to go. Just the world one. Our main problem, because all this, all this corrosion, rust, and problem stems from this. Which? This puppy that leaks. And Can we you shine the light on that? So this. It focus, it's not focusing. I've, I've got it wrapped in special tape, but that leaks. So we're going to get that changed while we're here. This is fresh water out of the cooling system. Let's go. This is going to become our um. Salt water pump, salt water tap. This is fresh water. Gosh, there's so many. Gosh. This is the intercooler for the engine. We're just going to get a rehash. Some yellow paint. Okay, that'll make it work. What? Mr. Hart! Look at this, this is one of our main nose clamps. That one looks a bit dodgy. That is dodgy, look, it's just about to break. Dodgy, dodgy, brothers. <laughs> That's the thing we had fixed when we were in Costa Rica. We had this repaired. In Golfito. Yeah. Look at that. It's coring. What's that mean? Or rotting. When you run rods down through the core, just to clean them out. Oh, it needs coring. Rotting, yeah. Rodding. Needs a rodding. <laughs> you rod your core. Even better. This is where we are now, just outside that wall. Ansa's just dropped me off. There we go, the gearbox is ready to come out. I've just got to uh, undo the coupling onto the tail shaft, prop shaft, and uh, they're Imperial, and I don't have those, so those uh, spanners with me, so I'll come back and do that. And then I'll get me mate Grant over, and uh, we'll lift this out. I reckon it weighs about 50 kilos, 60 kilos, so it's about 120 pounds. So it'll take two of us uh, to manhandle it out of here. So I've lifted the engine and gearbox up. Look at the mess in there. It's amazing when you turn the lights on. Um, anyway, I've lifted the engine gearbox up. I've chocked the engine with some blocks and um, I've disconnected the propeller shaft. So now we have official separation between the two gearbox engine and um, it definitely needs some TLC so looking forward to this little project and at the same time I'll be able to clean all this area up but anyway you know, I'll make Grant's coming over tomorrow so uh, the two of us are going to try and lift and manhandle this lump of cast iron out of here we're going to need some luck I think Look at that, we've got a gearbox on the kitchen, on the galley floor. So, that's where she was, that's where she is. 
That's where she's going. After a shirt load of manhandling, we now have the whole gearbox in the tender. It's taking us how long? An hour? Yeah, probably. Yeah. There's only 300 kilos. Yes. So we're going to have a cup of tea.